let's take a look at adding and subtracting rational expressions. Okay, so when you add and subtract fractions, the first thing you want to do is you want to find a common denominator. So if we look here, we have a 4x, and here we have a 10x. All right, so if we were to list out the multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and so on, and then the multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, the smallest number that they have in common is 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 20 in our common denominator. Okay, then, since they both have an x in the denominator here, we're going to also include the x in our common denominator. So now what you want to do is you want to look at the original denominator and say, what do I need to multiply this by to get it to become a 20x? Well, you just have to multiply it by 5. So if we multiply the denominator by 5, let's also multiply the numerator by 5. So then 5 times 5 is 25, so we're left with 25 over 20x. Okay, so let's look at our second fraction. So what do we multiply 10x by to give us 20x? Well, really, just 2. So if I multiply the denominator by 2, I have to multiply the numerator by 2 to keep it equivalent. Okay, so 3 times 2 is 6, so that leaves us with 6 over 20x. Now, once you have a common denominator, all you're going to do is just add the numerators and keep the common denominator. So if you add 25 plus 6, that gives us 31. So we have 31 over 20x. So now you always want to look and see, well, can I simplify this? So if I have a 31 in my numerator and a 20 in my denominator, I mean, the only number that divides evenly into both of them is 1. So this one, nice and easy. It doesn't even simplify. This would be our answer. Okay, so number 2, when we look at our denominators, we have an x minus 5 and an x. Now, with these, there's nothing you can really multiply this x by to get it to say x minus 5. So, and keep in mind, you're not allowed to just subtract 5 from the numerator and the denominator because then our fraction wouldn't be equivalent. So it looks like what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to multiply the denominator of this first fraction by x and the denominator of the second fraction by x minus 5. So our common denominator will include both of them. Our common denominator is going to be x times x minus 5. Okay, so in order to get our first denominator to look like the common denominator, we would have to multiply it by x. And if we do that on the bottom, we also have to do that on the top. So 4 times x is 4x. And then the second denominator here, we're going to have to multiply this by the x minus 5. So again, whatever we do in the denominator, oh, let me erase that. We have to also do in the numerator. Okay, right, so here, let's just distribute this. So we have 2x and then minus 10. Okay, so now this time, we're going to subtract our numerators and keep the denominator. Now, when you subtract the numerators, you have to be careful. You have to remember to take this negative sign here and distribute it to both terms. So let me bring my 4x down. And then I'm going to distribute the negative to the 2x, giving me negative 2x. And then I'm going to distribute the negative to the negative 10, giving me positive 10. And then let me rewrite my denominator. Now, it's a good idea to leave this in factored form because, I mean, what you want to do is once you combine your like terms on top, you do want to see if you can simplify your fraction. And remember, in order to simplify a fraction, you would factor the top, factor the bottom, and see if anything cancels. So I wouldn't take this x and distribute it in here. The only reason we had to distribute the 2 in the beginning into our parentheses was so that we could combine our like terms from this numerator with this numerator. Okay, so you're going to see what happens is when we combine our like terms, we can combine the 4x minus 2x, so that gives us 2x plus 10 over x times x minus 5. Now, even if you try to factor the top, 
So if you want, you can pull out a 2, leaving you with x plus 5. Nothing is going to cancel anyway, okay, because an x plus 5 doesn't cancel with an x minus 5. So you can either leave your answer in factored form, you can leave it like this, or now that we know that nothing does cancel out, now if you want to take this x and distribute it in to make the denominator say x squared minus 5x, that's okay too. All right, now these denominators in number three, you could say, you could see right away, look a little more complicated. We have x squared minus 36 and x squared plus 6x. Now what I'm going to recommend is that if something can be factored, I'm going to say go ahead and factor it first because it's going to help you find the common denominator. So in the first fraction, I just factored this using dots, difference of perfect squares. And then in the second fraction, I'm going to pull out the greatest common factor of an x, and that leaves me with x plus x. Okay, so let's, let's write our common denominator underneath here. So anything that's included in either one of the fractions has to be in our common denominator. So here we have an x plus 6 and an x minus 6. So I'm going to include both of those in our common denominator. And then here we have an x, which we don't yet have in our denominator. So let's put that in our common denominator. And this x plus 6 is already in the common denominator, so we do not have to write it again. Okay, so if we look at our first fraction, we say, well, what, would, what is this missing that our common denominator has? It's missing the x. So let's put it in the denominator, but then we also have to put it in the numerator as well. And 2 times x is 2x. Okay, what is our second denominator, our second fraction missing that the common denominator has. It's missing this x minus 6. So let's put it in the denominator and the numerator as well. And then 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Okay, so now when we combine our like terms on the top, when we subtract the second numerator from the first, keep in mind we have a negative sign again, so we're going to have to distribute that negative to both terms. So I'm going to bring down my 2x, and then I have minus x, and then plus 6. Right, let me bring down the common denominator. All right, so now when we combine our like terms on the top, uh, 2x minus x is just x, so we have an x plus 6, and then over x times x plus 6 times x minus 6. Now what's going to happen is this x plus 6 in the numerator is going to cancel off with the x plus 6 in the denominator, and it leaves us with, well, we have to put something on top. And keep in mind, x plus 6 divided by x plus 6 is 1, so we technically do have a 1 up here. So it leaves us with 1 over x times x minus 6. And you can leave it like this, or if you want to distribute that x into the x minus 6, you could rewrite the denominator as x squared minus 6x. And the last one we're going to take a look at today is number 4. Now when you look at these denominators, we have an x plus 1, an x minus 6, and then this trinomial here that can be factored. So what's nice about this is when we go to factor this, our factors, two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 are positive 1, and negative 6. So it actually winds up being the same factors as what's in our other denominator. So that'll be, make it, that makes it really easy to find a common denominator. Here is our common denominator. x plus 1 times x minus 6. All right, so let's rewrite each of these with an x plus 1 times an x minus 6. Okay, so let's look at our first fraction. What is this denominator missing that this denominator has? Well, the x minus 6. So we'll multiply the denominator and the numerator by x minus 6. And 1 times x minus 6 is just x minus 6. Okay, so what is this second fraction missing in its denominator that our common denominator has? This x plus 1 right here. So let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by x plus 1. And then x times x is x squared 
and x times 1 is x. Now this last fraction, it already has the common denominator, so I'm just going to take our numerator and just bring it right down. Okay, so when we rewrite this as one fraction, we're going to keep our common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 6, and for right now, I'm just going to kind of bring everything down. All right, so we have an x minus 6, we have an x squared plus x, and because we have the subtraction sign here, don't forget to distribute it to both terms, okay? Don't bring down 5x minus 2. Uh, don't bring down negative 5x minus 2. It's a negative 5x and then a plus 2, right? And negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 5x plus 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my like terms and combine them. And at the same time, I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. I want to have my biggest exponents first. All right, so this x squared doesn't combine with anything. So let's bring that down. All right, let's see what the x is. I have a positive x, I have another positive x, and I have a negative 5x. So x plus x is 2x, minus 5x is negative 3x. And then when I combine my numbers, I have a negative 6 and a positive 2, which gives me negative 4. Okay, I'm just going to put some equal signs in here. I really should have been doing that all throughout. All right, so now if I go to um, <clears throat> factor the numerator, two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3 would be negative 4 and positive 1. So this factors to x minus 4, x plus 1. And I'm going to bring down my common denominator. And what I see here is my x plus 1s cancel. So in my final answer, what I'm left with is x minus 4 over x minus 6.